Migration is part of the solution to climate change as much as it is an example of, of the problem. Typically, we think that people would move because they failed to adapt to the impacts of climate change. And that, in a way, migration is a signal that adaptation has not worked. But what we've realized on the ground uh, while doing field work with people is that many of them were also migrating because they were using their migration as a strategy to adapt to climate change. So for them, while migrating, they were adapting to climate change. They were diversifying their livelihoods. They were adding an additional income uh, for the households. And it's not that people have no other choices but to move, but that people move because they want to hold on to their livelihoods. They want to hold on to their ways of living. So when I think about my research with, with fishing communities, because that's a part of a generational culture, tradition, people would rather move as fishers and to continue fishing, to keep that part of their life that's so important to them and to their societies, than to change jobs, than to go into something else. The international communities should actually focus more on generating funds to cushion climate migrants and help them transition to their new lives. For migration to maximize its adaptation potential, it is important that it is anticipated and organized. So it is important that the people can choose the conditions in which they will migrate, where they go, when they go. And the problem we have here is that a lot of governments and a lot of authorities are extremely reluctant to the idea of organizing migration. Uh, they see migration as something they could resist, as something that they should try and avoid. Uh, whereas if they were to organize and plan migration, then it would give migration a real chance to become a meaningful and efficient adaptation strategy. An example from small island states is uh, to be taken from Kiribati, which is a small archipelago in the South Pacific, also of very low elevation, so highly vulnerable to sea level rise. And a few years ago, Kiribati started a program that they called Migration with Dignity. And the idea of the program was to train people from Kiribati with language skills, with skills that would be needed by employers abroad so that those people could progressively migrate out of Kiribati into other jobs or other education abroad and could also contribute from abroad to the adaptation of those who had stayed in Kiribati. So that's an example of a kind of statewide program that's really sought uh, to foster migration as adaptation. You have the communities of origin, the families in the places of these migrants who, who can benefit from remittances, from the money that's sent back, but also from social remittances, the knowledge that's obtained through migration, uh, the skills that are obtained through migration that also are transferred home. Destination communities also benefit from migration in general, by having new sources of labor, new skills, new ideas, all of these things that migrants bring home, they also bring with them. What can be adaptation for some can be maladaptation to others. And by that, I mean, can be detrimental to the adaptation of others. So for example, some migrants might uh, migrate to diversify their livelihoods, but at the same time, this might impoverish those who stay back in the region of origin, because typically those who will migrate will be the most educated, the youngest uh, in a community, which might leave the rest of the community uh, deprived from some workforce. So when we discuss uh, migration as adaptation, while it is important to recognize that migration can be a powerful adaptation strategy for many, we also need to consider who is affected by this migration not just the migrants, but also their communities of origin and their communities of destination.